Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel Ordinary Data Scientist where we talk about data science. People so let's uh, let's cover the remaining uh, remaining concepts from the chapter. So the first quantitative qualitative chart that we will study is pie chart. Uh, before understanding the pie charts and other kind of charts people I'll request that please go through the notes that I prepared from the book where I have collected the definition, the formulas and also try to put my uh, understanding from the industry okay so let me quickly uh, go through one example first here i have written a story of the bike sales in 2019 versus 2020 okay how the market performed in these two years and also which are the major players in the market now this is the story now if you are a decision maker or a, or a senior person you have to literally read all this line to understand what is happening in the market but instead of that Let's look into these two chart. The first chart says that hey, there are two dominating players, Hero and Bajaj, which which controls probably 75% of the market, isn't it? And remaining other companies like Royal Enfield, KTM, you know, all those Honda and all they just contribute 25%. Yeah. So I can see that yeah, these are the major players. The second chart, if you come to the second chart, you can see there are uh, two year sales 2019 and 2020 and 2019 was extremely good the sales was almost like 7000 average if you if i say average was 7000 you know per month but if you see the 2020 sales it was up to the mark for first two months and then it suddenly declined and it could never catch up with the 2019 sales right always it is it is lower than the 2019 sales and this is mainly because of COVID-19 lockdown. Uh, the market was closed, business was closed, people lost their jobs, you know, because of that, the sales declined in 2020. So that's the beauty of presenting the data points, you know, in a chart where you can clearly see the numbers, clearly interpret what is happening and also make some uh, better, probably better insight, you know. So probably, uh, you know, the pie chart and all, uh, you, you just need to create using a percentage. So here, let's say if you have Hero and Bajaj and let's say I'm taking one more example. I don't know, Panasonic, KTM and Royal Enfield. So only five. Okay. So what is the sales? Let's say sales in 2020. So they sold 100. They sold 200, they sold 50, they sold around uh, 200 and they sold 50. If I did do the total, total will be 3, 600. Yeah. Now I have to convert that into percentage contribution or the size. You can say percentage size or whatever. So let's convert that 100 divided by 600. Similarly, 200 divided by 600 and so on and so forth. So let's say this is, I'm just making it up. This is X per, X1 percentage. This is X2 percentage up to, up to X5 percentage. Now you will plot the percentage on a pie chart. Okay. So the pie chart will always have like 100% value. And then out of 100, X1 will go to some company. X2 will go to some another company. Uh, you know the based on the sales and everything you will pop you will give the size of pi so I, again i took an example here uh, like the case of bajaj and all uh, very easy to understand but here also i explain how to calculate the percentage of size or something bar if you want to populate or plot something some values you can use this kind of thing you know so here it will have year and here you have the sales and then you plot the sales on a yearly basis like what happened in 2018, 90, 20, 21, so on and so forth. Okay. So here you populated the sales and year. Now people please understand that to plot this kind of graph, the spy chart and the let's say these are the bar chart, you have minimum two kind of data points here if you see we had year and sales here we had the company and sales 
so uh, you know uh, next time you get the data probably you you can think that what should be the right uh, right kind of uh, graphs uh, to plot that uh, that those those data points okay another example just i want to put that is not there in the book is the clusters a cluster bar you can say cluster bar plot it's there in the excel let's say you have this kind of data this is here and there are two companies let's say a b now year is 20 10 let's say 10 15 20 11 let's say 15 20 and so on and so forth you have multiple years multiple data points now here if you see instead of two data points you have three data points right you have year we have sales of a sales of b now how how can you plot them in a better way one is like you plot two graphs for company a and company b the yearly sales like that something like that but here you cannot compare that how a is doing doing good or bad compared to b you should have both graphs on a same axis that's why you will combine this two and you will plot something like this that this is sales this is your 2010 2011 and so forth but we will have two bars this is a this is b similarly this is a this is b this is a this is b the same year 11 we have 2 10 we have 2 and so on and so forth you see we are getting a gist of that yeah a is probably did good in few years and b did good in just one year and so you are getting a gist of that also you can plot the same data using the line graph these are not there in the book but very important very uh, useful in in our uh, professional life okay the same you you had the axis 2011 2012 and so forth this is your sales instead of bar i'm using a line let's say the uh, the white line presents represents a and the red line presents b okay now the beauty of plotting a line is that you can see a trend also that hey the company b is catching up the sales company a is stagnant and probably you know going down or something so line definitely gives a comparison comparison between a and b and also giving a trend you know how the two companies will are behaving or you know might look like in future while the bar is just for comparison you might not get the gist of the train very easily here here you will see the train very very easily let's say let's quickly cover them also Pareto and one more I think so Pareto is what if what is Pareto now to understand the Pareto you have to understand the concept behind Pareto what exactly is is Pareto I think it came from Italian economist uh, whose name was also Pareto and he said that 80% of the 80% of countries wealth is held by 20% of population you know using some analysis he found that the similar kind of statement we try to make in our in our day to day life which is which I captured captured here is that 80% of the consequences come from just 20% of the causes you know this is known as 80 20 percent rule also now let's take one example let's say you are a manufacturer you know and you produce cars uh, on monthly basis you produce thousands of cars let's say thousand out of thousand 200s are always defective to certain cases okay now if i want to plot the the causes like what might be causing the the defectives and number of cars you will say that okay the electricity you know the inside the car it's not happening so probably 20 car has that kind of cases 
let's say color when we color the car let's say there is some defective in 50 cars because of that third can be let's say your uh, engine so let's say remaining 10 is engine and some some more causes can be there and total is your 200 right so we'll see that the top three causes if you see the electricity color and engine almost contribute around 80 divided by 200 which is roughly 40 percent so if you fix just three problems out of remaining let's say more hundred problems are there if you fix just three problem you you will fix almost like 40 percent of the production or the defectives similarly in our data science also we don't try to solve all the problems in the business we don't try to solve that you know there can be like hundred of problems we just try to find out which are the most significant one which are the most uh, most uh, let me write it which are the most significant one significant which are the most frequent one you know which is which is which is happening you know uh, in most of the most of the cases and all and which has the huge impact might be there is a problem number 10 where just you have like five cars only but this is let's say your steering wheel if steering wheel you can if you don't fix then it's a big big problem right so you have, might have to consider that also like okay even it's like five problem i have to consider that 10th problem also yeah? so huge impact okay so that's how you try to find the prob uh, the problems and then try to uh, fix them so this is called your 80 percent 80 20 percent rule in the book if you see uh, you know the the electric motor example that poor wiring causing let's say 40 counts short in coil causing another uh, another i think 20, 25 or something similarly defective is causing another something you know so if you touch here the percentage almost like here it reached almost 90 percent 90 percent problem is coming from just three uh, three things poor wiring short in coil and defective plug only just three so if you fix this your 90 percent defective will be covered so that's that's how you plot the pareto uh, there are examples in the book which you can probably go through and understand uh, but this very pareto is very very important in our corporate uh, world okay so people lastly i'll cover the scatter plot scatter plot is very very important to understand the outlier to understand the distribution of your data points you know and also you you need to understand the the range let's say you have two axis x and y and your data points look like this that uh, let's say this is your temperature and this is your ice cream sold okay ice cream sold so if temperature is 30 your ice cream will be 100 sold if temperature is 32 your ice cream is 120 if temperature is 35 your ice cream getting sold 150 uh, and so on and so forth temperature goes up to let's say 55 degree your ice cream sold is 250 degree okay so that's the ice cream sold now if you plot that here let's say the, the excess is your temperature and this is your ice cream sold you will have that temp where temperature is this much your ice cream will sold like this and if temperature is growing your ice cream is selling more and so on and so forth you then you will find there is a pattern that the temperature is increasing the ice cream sold is increasing right there is a there is a there is a pattern even there might be cases that even temperature is negative you might be getting sold some ice cream that's a negative 20 degrees Celsius. even people might be liking ice cream there similarly you know 100 to uh, similarly in zero scale you might be selling some ice cream but the highest in the highest quantity sold is coming from the highest temperature so that's the count kind of distribution of the graph that it's getting sold from here to here uh, here to here 
and also the uh, the data points is more concerned towards the positive temperature specifically from this range to this range so you should target your ice cream customer between this temperature 30 degree to 40 degree problem so that's the importance of the scatter plot uh, to understand the as i said the the outlier and all uh, all those things yeah so i think people with that we covered the chapter again we covered so many things in the book uh, you know the group data we started with group data and group data then we saw the example of the frequency table how to create that how to create using the your range and other kind of uh, matrices and then from the frequency table how to plot the histogram the frequency polygon and ogive using the histogram uh, histogram table and then we we talk about two other in, not so important uh, plots dot plots and steam and leaf uh, further we talk about some of the quantitative charts like pie chart uh, bar chart uh, cluster chart and line chart you know this is these are very very important when you want to compare multiple uh, multiple entities multiple products companies and so on the same axis you know uh, you, if you plot you you see the train you see the comparison and everything then we talk about the pareto which is 80 20 percent rule very very important in your uh, in your day-to-day -day life 80 20 percent rule okay how to plot that and then we talk about the scatter plot so i think that's that's all uh, everything in this book please go through some of the examples in the book uh, and try to try to solve them yourself uh, and think about if you are a professional think about that uh, that graph how it will suit in your network and you exactly use them uh, and try to probably use your real data to populate uh, those kind of charts or graph also okay uh, again people if you have any kind of doubt question or suggestion please feel free to drop your suggestion in the comment and i'll try to reply or go through them uh, with that people i'll take a pause here i'll see you in the next chapter thank you have a good day